Hi friends, hope all of you are uh, enjoying the videos. Please go through it thoroughly and uh, prepare well. Be focused and study well. Okay. In this video, we are going to discuss about the chapter thermodynamics. It is also a grade 11th chapter prescribed in the CBSE and NCRT syllabus. In this chapter, we are going to discuss about the movement of heat, we can say, in simple sense, heat. So, thermal properties of matter, one chapter we discussed in the previous video. Heat is the total energy contained in a body, in one sense we discussed. And it also can be said, the energy which flows from one body to another body because of the temperature difference. That way also we can explain what is heat. Okay. One another term, internal energy. That also comes up, we use in this chapter, with this concept. Internal energy is the total energy because of the molecular motion or movement of the molecule inside the body or their interaction. That total energy is called internal energy of a system or of a body, we can say. Okay, so based on these two, we are going to discuss the concepts of this chapter. I mean, we have three laws in thermodynamics chapter, zeroth law, first law and second law of thermodynamics. Based on that, their application are the discussion point of this chapter mainly. The first is the law, zeroth law of thermodynamics theorem. It deals with regarding thermal equilibrium. When two systems have same temperature, we call it as thermal equilibrium. In order to attain the thermal equilibrium, Temperature can flow from, I mean heat can flow from high temperature to low temperature body. For that, there should be diathermic walls. These two bodies should be separated by a diathermic wall. Should be done. If they are separated by an adiabatic wall, which do not allow the heat to flow through it, then you have to keep separately, you have to make the temperatures equal. There will be no flow of heat between them. So, in any one way, if you keep the temperature same or by flow of heat from high temperature to low temperature, two systems can become thermal equilibrium. So zero to law stays like this way. If two systems are thermal equilibrium with a third system, then separately they are in thermal equilibrium. So that because of the equalness of temperature, we could say. Now, two terms, heat and energy, I told you, heat has a unit joule the quantity and in energy also have the unit joule only total energy but heat can flow from one system to another system if there is a temperature difference energies cannot flow from like that from a single system itself heat i mean the energy of these molecules it can increase or decrease by the variation of temperature in energy depends only on the temperature of the system we could say about it the thermodynamic variables, in order to specify a system of thermodynamic system, we can use pressure, volume, temperature, mass, internal energy, like these terms. These all variables are called thermodynamic variables. Two types of thermodynamic variables are there, extensive and intensive thermodynamic variables. Those variables which changes when the system divides or system's dimension changes are called extensive like mass a system if you divide into two pieces i mean two sections then mass will be changing mass is an extensive volume is an extensive u the internal energy is an extensive total energy will be changing now intensive means the density will not change temperature pressure like these terms are called intensive variables which do not change if that system also divide into two pieces or like that okay then the relation between internal energy and heat is given by first law of thermodynamics. It's actually another way of law of conservation of energy. In this law, it says that the total heat supplied to a system is utilized for two purposes. One, to increase its internal energy and to do a useful work. That means the total energy is conserved. There is no loss or gain of the energy. If delta Q is the total heat you supply to the body, the system, then that will be equal to sum of the internal energy change and work done. The work done can be expressed by P into change in volume. Pressure into change in volume can be the work done. 
if it is variable dv then we can do w is equal to integral v1 to v2 initial volume to final volume into pressure into change in volume dv the parameter volume parameter we can say pdv will give you the work done in an i adapt this process thermodynamic process based on the variable change we have some types of process like suppose if temperature of the system is kept constant throughout the heat supply we will call as isothermal process if the heat is kept constant means you covered with an adiabatic bowl and there is no flow of heat in or out of the system we call as adiabatic process if pressure is kept constant we call as isobaric process if volume is kept constant we call as isochoric process these all are the thermodynamic processes which we have to deal with in all these cases we can find work done by using the first law of thermodynamics as an application of first law of thermodynamics so by using first law of thermodynamics we can find the work done like this way at constant pressure the work done will be p into v2 minus v1 pressure into change in volume because pressure is a constant there the same thing if you use to ideal gas equation pv is equal to mu rt we have the ideal gas equation p into v is equal to mu rt or nrt you can use it at the p is the pressure v is the volume and mu is the number of moles r is the gas constant and t is the temperature so p into v is mu into rt so we can say p into v2 minus v1 is equal to mu rt2 minus t1 if you draw a pv diagram for pressure isobaric process then p is a constant as the volume increases here if you find the slope of this graph slope you know change by this one the slope will be zero so isobaric process the pressure the tan theta if you find it that become zero here now here at constant volume so what done will be the area under this pv diagram if you find this area below this you will get the pv diagram from the area the work done you can find out it will be maximum in isobaric process now if volume is kept constant unless there is no change in volume suppose pressure is changing but volume is not changing then work done will be zero work done is zero because you know work done p is equal, uh, w is equal to p dv if dv is zero work also zero this is a pv diagram for volume pv i uh, mean if constant volume volume is constant but pressure is increasing there is no work done if temperature is kept constant we call as isothermal process then there will p into v is a constant so relation between pressure and volume is actually v2 by v1 is p1 by v2 inversely proportional we can say at constant temperature pressure is inversely proportional to volume so v2 by v1 is equal to p1 by p2 the relation for isothermal process in that the work done w is equal to 2.303 nrt log v2 by v1 this constant came by converting natural logarithm to the base e n is the number of moles r is the gas constant and t is the constant temperature at which happens initial volume and final volume so instead of v2 by v1 you can substitute p1 by p2 also in terms of pressure this is an exponential graph you can get pv like this way pv diagram for isothermal process so here it can be positive also negative also whenever the volume increases from initial to final the work done is by the system and is took as positive an expansion so isobaric expansion v2 minus v1 we have then adiabatic i mean isothermal expansion we have v2 by v1 this all will be positive so work done will be positive for an isothermal expansion and isobaric expansion if final volume is less that means volume is decreased or the system is compressed isothermally then isothermal compression we have a negative work done that is work is done on the system if work is done by the system it's positive taken w and if work is done on the system is taken as negative isothermal process now if the total heat is kept constant for a system that means we we'll call as adiabatic process no heat flow to the system or from the system then adiabatic process we have w is equal to the work done is equal to mu r by gamma minus 1 a constant gamma we introduce here into t1 minus t2 this gamma is the ratio of cp and cv where cp and cv as the molar specific capacity of gas 
at constant pressure and at constant volume. Cp by Cv. The ratio is given by gamma. There, for adiabatic process, Pv power gamma is a constant. This is a relation between pressure and volume for an adiabatic process. So here work done. In terms of temperature, we can say like this way. Mu R by gamma minus 1 into T1 minus T2. Take care, T1 minus T2 is coming in there. And in terms of pressure and volume, kind of 1 by gamma minus 1 into P1, V1 minus P2, V2. Pressure and volume changes you can do. Here you can see one thing. If W is positive, then T1 is greater than T2. That means during adiabatic expansion, work done is positive. In that expansion, the temperature decreases. That means the system cools. And adiabatic compression, the system become hotter. That means temperature increases. It is because in during adiabatic process, the system works by using the heat of the system itself. It's not getting any heat from out or in. So whatever it's stored, using that heat, it expands. So it cools. Adiabatic expansion and compression. The graph will be look like similar to this PV diagram of isothermal, will be somewhat steep, will be it. So we have these four types of process, thermodynamic processes. During this, the thermodynamic variables get changing. As a result, we get some work. In isochoric process, work done is zero. Remaining all, we get some useful work. That is thermodynamics. So because of the heat flow, we are getting a useful work from this. This concept is implemented in heat engines. A heat engine absorb heat from a source and do some useful work and remaining heat is given to the sink. A source, a working substance and sink gives a concept of heat engine. As much energy it absorbs, it gives that much work. So how much work it do from the heat absorbed? Work done by heat absorbed, we call as efficiency of a heat engine. A term, you can get the calculation also, efficiency of a heat engine, work by heat absorbed will be equal to 1 minus Q2 by Q1, where Q2 is the heat released to the sink, means a reservoir at low temperature, 1 minus Q2 by Q1. So Q1, Q1 is the heat absorbed, Q2 is the heat released. From there we get the efficiency of a heat engine. So, efficiency of heat engine maximum will be 100 percentage efficient means this value will become Q2 will be zero. So, whatever the heat absorbed will be converted to work, then its value become one. Practically, that is not possible. But theoretically, one scientist Sadi Carnot designed an engine called Carnot engine through reversible and irreversible processes, like four steps. He changed the uh, iso uh, thermodynamic variables pressure volume temperature through four steps and he found 100 percentage efficiency in terms of temperature also you can say efficiency is equal to 1 minus t2 by t1 that is equal to 1 minus q2 by q1 because q2 by q1 will be equal to t2 by t1 for a car not engine a reverse of heat engine is there we call as a refrigerator so for a heat engine it absorbs heat from a source convert to useful work so their work is done by the system and remaining is given to the sink it's reverse if you do work on the system then it absorb energy from a lower temperature reservoir and release to higher temperature reservoir this high temperature reservoir will be called source and low temperature reservoir will be called sink actually so if you do a work on the system on the working substance then can it absorb reverse that's called refrigerator actually. Refrigerator takes heat from a lower reservoir and give to the outer, outer, sur outer surrounding which is, will be at high temperature. That happens in the refrigerator. The coefficient of performance of refrigerator beta is equal to heat absorbed from this divided by the work done on the system. Q1 minus Q2 will be the work done on the system and Q2 is the heat absorbed from the sink. This ratio will give you the coefficient of performance for the refrigerator. For an ideal concept, heat engine is called Carnot engine. That will be, efficiency will be the highest. Okay. So, regarding this working of heat engine and refrigerator, we have the second law of thermodynamics. There are two statements, Planck statement and Clausius statement. In the first statement, it deals with the working of heat engine. 
it says that no process is possible whose sole result is the conversion of heat into complete work that means no heat engine is 100 percent efficient through a single process it's not possibly saying about it and the second statement is regarding the refrigerator a single process by which we cannot possible to convert heat from a lower reservoir to a higher reservoir the work done so that's the inability or the negative two statements are there that's based on heat engine working and refrigerator working the second law of thermodynamics so the major topic of this chapter is three laws zeroth law first law and second law of thermodynamics zeroth law you get the concept of thermal equilibrium first law we get the concept of the work done heat and internal energy change and second law we get the working of heat engine and refrigerator from the first law please take care delta q is the heat supplied it is positive means heat is given to the system delta q is negative means heat is released from the system delta u is a change in internal energy if temperature increases only internal energy changes it does not depend upon any other factor only on temperature depends so isothermal expansion delta u will be positive isothermal compression delta u how will you change so delta u is zero there okay, because there is no change in temperature in isothermal process delta u can be positive negative or zero based on the change in temperature if temperature do not change delta u will be zero then delta q will be p delta v we can say so work done by the system is positive work done on the system is negative because change in volume it can be increase also decrease also so based on that concepts we can do positive negative concepts then work done in each isother this thermodynamic process also we discussed please be thorough with these equations which will be help you to solve the numerical questions we can do some numerical questions we can do a question like this way a sample of gas expands from an initial pressure and volume of 10 pascal and 1 meter cube to a final volume of 2 meter cube during the expansion the pressure and volume are related by the equation p is equal to a v squared where a is equal to 10 newton power meter power 8 find the work done by the gas during the expansion so we have to find the work done in this process you know work done w is equal to we have integral v1 to v2 p dv is a general equation for the work done any equation any type of process we can do it now here p pressure is given as a v square and v1 and v2 is also given so direct integration only w is equal to integral v1 initial volume is 1 meter cube and final volume is 2 meter cube so v1 1 to 2 and pressure p is a v square dv so while you integrate it a into v square integration is v cube by 3 from 1 to 2 that will be equal to a by 3 i'm taking out 2 cube minus 1 cube that is a by 3 into 2 cube is 8 8 minus 1 is 7 now a is given 10 and the value is given so the word done is equal to 10 by 3 into 7 10 by 3 into 7 that is almost 23 joules so the option a is correct direct equation only so i have to integrate it so here p is given a v square a into volume square so volume square you integrated v cube by 3 will come you know the general equation for the integration integral x power n dx is equal to x power n plus 1 by n plus 1 if x1 to x2 is there then x1 to x2 is the value x power n plus 1 by n plus 1 that's the general equation for the integration that we applied here hope you got this answer in this question we can do like this way the change in internal energy of a thermodynamic system which has absorbed 2 kilocalorie of heat and then 400 joule of work is the bracket is given 1 calorie is equal to 4.2 joule so here uh, change in internal energy is given absorbed how much heat is given and work done is given you have to find change in internal energy we have the first law of thermodynamics delta q is equal to delta u plus delta w the work done 
you have to find delta u so delta u is equal to delta q minus delta w the heat absorbed is 2 kilocalorie you should convert to joules because work is done in joules actually so 2 kilocalorie means 2 into kilo means 1000 into calorie 1 calorie is 4.2 joule is given here so into 4.2 minus work done is given 400 joules that is equal to 2 into 4.2 is 8.4 into 1000 that is 8400 minus 400 that is 8000 joules that is equal to 8 kilojoules so delta u is 8 kilojoules so direct question only the first law of thermodynamics how to utilize Okay, so here how to convert calorie, kilo calorie also I shown here. So 1000 into 4.2, that is 4200. So 1 kilo calorie is equal to 4200 joules. You can use that shortcut also. Just rearrange it. So while you taking the concept, heat absorbed is positive and if heat released it will be negative. Okay, change in energy and work done. By the system positive, on the system negative. Concept also you should take care. Okay. Got it. We can do one more question. In this question, we can do like this. 5.6 liter of helium gas at STP is adiabatically compressed to 0.7 liter. Initial temperature is T1. The work done in the process is. So you have to do the adiabatic work done. Here, the things are given like Initial is given and then we have to completely to change this final temperature and volume like that concepts in adiabatic process. So the concepts are given here like this way. We have first of all this volume and temperature how they are related with the in adiabatic process. We know for pressure and volume we have P V power gamma is a constant. And for temperature and volume, we have T V power gamma minus 1 is a constant. So here we can write as T1 V1 power gamma minus 1 is equal to T2 V2 power gamma minus 1. And he is a monatomic gas it is. So monatomic gas, this gamma is given by, gamma is equal to 5 by 3 is a monatomic gas, this constant gamma. So from here, you can find the temperature T2 because T1 is given, V1 and V2 is given, gamma is given. So T2, some second temperature you can find out. Then we can find the work done in adiabatic process. So here, we could write T2 is equal to T1 into V1 by V2 power gamma minus 1. We have here T1 is given uh, as, okay, in the T1, it will be T1 itself into V1 is there 5.6 by its compressed you know v2 is given 0 0.7 power gamma is 5 by 3 so 5 by 3 minus 1 if we do it will be 2 by 3 so t1 into 5.6 by 0 0.7 is 8 so 8 power 2 by 3 5 by 3 minus 1 is 2 by 3 that is equal to cube root of 8 is 2 2 square is 4 so 4 t1 you are getting so t2 is 4 t1 in terms of T1, we got T2. For T1, we get. Now we know the equation for work done. W is equal to NR T1 minus T2 by gamma minus 1. Just substitute the values. N is the number of moles. R is the gas constant. Then T1 minus T2 by gamma minus 1. We have the number of moles is 1. Then actually, uh, no need to com completely substitute it. The answers options also in terms of R and T1. So just keep it this way. We have 1 by 4 into R T1 minus 4 T1 divided by gamma minus 1. That is 2 by 3. Okay, 0 0.25 moles. So if you substitute this, will be equal to, you rearrange it. A till bar is go up. So T1 minus 41 is minus 3 T1. Minus 3 T1 into 3, 9 will be there. So negative 9 by 8 R T1 is the answer, the work done. So option B is correct. The values. 
okay so here work done in adiabatic process we have to do this is the adiabatic process work done example so here t1 and t2 we have to find separately for that purpose we use the relation between volume and temperature for adiabatic process okay then rearrange it we got this concept i hope you understood it prepare well for your exams thank you for watching this video Bright Education Center, Medical and Engineering Entrance Coaching Center, Hilal Area, Doha, Qatar. For further inquiries, contact 3060679.